Octopath Traveler was one of the premier titles released for the Nintendo Switch this past summer. It was highly hyped ever since its announcement because it was a rare third-party exclusive for the Switch who seemed to promise a classic JRPG experience like those experienced on the Super Nintendo. In fact, some, including myself, suggested that the game would have a much bigger impact if it carried the Final Fantasy name instead of the original Project Octopath Traveler title. It's safe to say that sales-wise, the game has been a massive success so far. With more than 1 million units sold, Square Enix will surely be pleased with the results and have no doubt already green-lighted a sequel. Critical responses have been generally good. The game currently holds at 83 on Metacritic. However, those numbers seem to showcase a general mixed reaction, as some critics adored it while others thought it was a disappointment. It currently doesn't look like this will hold in the same regards as the classic Square SNES offerings. Personally, I think the game is great and I'm here to tell you why. However, do note that like most people, my taste may differ from yours, so I'd like to talk first about the few shortcomings I think Octopath Traveler presents. There are two big issues I have with the game that I think may or may not matter in your decision of investing in this game. The first issue is with the storyline. Stories are more or less non-factors for me in video game. I know that means that may sound sacrilegious to some of you, especially in a Japanese role-playing game, but I've never been one to hold much importance to storytelling. It can be a nice bonus and certainly can be something I enjoy when done well. In my opinion, Octopath mostly stumbles in this domain and presents an overall story that is at times interesting, but for the majority of the game, forgettable. The game tells the tales of eight different characters over the course of four chapters. It is totally voluntary whether or not you want to play all eight characters' storylines. Technically, you could play the entire game with only one character in your party, although I imagine that would be a very difficult task. I personally completed all eight storylines and found myself intrigued by only three of them. By chapter four, I honestly skipped over all the cutscenes and dialogue of four characters. Before I move on, I must applaud Square for giving us the option of skipping over all scenes and dialogue in this game. I wish every game would do that and not wait for new game plus. That being said, there's a reason why I skipped over most of the story. It just didn't grab me and to be honest, felt like it dragged on for the sake of prolonging that in-game clock so many people seem to use to judge the overall merits of a JRPG. The characters I did enjoy the most had to be Tarion and Primrose. Those storyline I didn't skip a single line. Maybe the 8 character premise was a bit too ambitious. What really killed it for me was the fact that you have to suspend your disbelief in order to enjoy the game. While you can have up to 4 characters in the party, only one of them will appear in the scenes and story limits. This means that the other 3 characters will suddenly disappear after a battle which makes some of the scenes that happen completely anti-climatic. I found it hard to invest myself in the storyline because of this. Primrose's story is particularly guilty of this as it's puzzling how some of these events would happen with your party members doing nothing to stop them. The final aspect I have to mention in the cons category is the overall grindiness Octopath requires of you. Now, I did put storytelling in the cons category, but noted that this is a category I don't attach too much importance, personally. Grinding, however, is something I dislike and a huge reason why I play so few GRPGs. This, again, is something you should take with a grain of salt, as some people adore grinding, and if you're one of those, I'm sure that you're already playing Octopath Traveler and enjoying it. I have completed pretty much everything the game had to offer in Octopath, completing all 8 storylines and unlocking all the jobs and secret jobs. This took me 55 hours, but that time is perhaps shorter than most because of all the dialogue I skipped. The reason I'm telling you all this is that about one fifth of that playtime was spent grinding and leveling up. And I know from reading and talking to others that most have spent way more time than that just grinding alone. There is one final area with super bosses that requires all 8 characters to beat. To do so, you'd have to level up all 8 characters to around level 70. When I beat the game, my highest character was 72, but most of the characters I had not used were in the low 30s. I imagine I'd have a good 10-15 hours, if not more, of grinding for me to reach a level where I'd have a fighting chance. And that's something that will definitely appeal to hardcore JRPG fans. Personally, I'd have enjoyed if the characters not in your party would have still gained a bit of experience when not used to limit the grinding to a minute. Having said all that, Octopath Traveler simply is an astounding game to play. Its battle system has to be one of my favorite there is. It reminds me a bit of what I experienced in Shin Megami Tensei 4. In that game, if you'd hit the enemy with a move they were weak to, you'd get an extra turn. In Octopath Traveler, 
every enemy character or boss has a number attached to it. Every time you hit them in an attack they are weak to, that number decreases. When it reaches zero, that character's shield is broken and it won't attack for one or two turns depending on when the shield is broken. Not only that, but all attacks done to it will now do more damage. This simple mechanic makes the game a joy to play, especially when it comes to my next point. Octopath Traveler has the best, most exciting boss battles I have ever played in a Japanese role-playing game. They steal the show, especially when you go against the game's many optional super bosses. I had one of those battles last more than 30 minutes, only for me to lose and quickly jump right back into it because I didn't care. The satisfaction you have when you defeat those bosses is unmatched and frankly, for the most part, the rewards are incredible, especially when it comes to the game's four secret jobs. Jobs are integral to Octopath. There are 8 main jobs to the game, one for each character. Starting at chapter 2, you can unlock the ability to equip a side job to each character, if you find the corresponding shrine. The game rewards you for experimenting, and while certain jobs seem to be made for each other, there are no wrong choices here and it even warrants a second player too for those who like to challenge themselves by using different combinations. You also earn job points alongside experience points and a currency after every battle. The job points allow you to learn skills exclusive to each job. And while you can only use those skills with the corresponding job equipped, you can learn support skills that you can keep permanently even when switching jobs. The catch here is that you can only have 4 support skills equipped at all times. This reminds me a bit of the 4 move limit with Pokemon as there are dozens and dozens of skills that are really useful but it's up to you to choose which one to have in your party. I found myself switching those skills back and forth and they were sometimes crucial to my success. Oftentimes when I was bested with a boss, switching a few skills around allowed me to succeed. There are many more aspects I could cover regarding Octopath Traveler. Like the fact that unlike most RPGs I've played, reaching a new town doesn't always guarantee you better equipment. Most weapons and armor have advantages and disadvantages which I thought was brilliant. I don't want to cover everything about the game as that would turn into a spoiler territory and it would be a disservice to the game. My goal here was to hopefully give you an idea whether Octopath can be a game you'd enjoy. Personally, while I can certainly identify a few shortcomings, Octopath Traveler is one of my favorite role-playing games I've played in the last 10 years. It is definitely one of the best games the Switch has to offer and I would expect a sequel in a few years. I would maybe like it if they'd find a way to connect all 8 storylines next time and include a way for characters not used to still gain a bit of XP. That being said, Octopath Traveler is simply incredible and one that I would recommend greatly to anyone curious about the Nintendo Switch. Octopath Traveler has surpassed my expectations. I can't wait to see what the future holds from Square, Enix and Acquire. I am fully aware of the value of those terms, Headmaster. It is for that very reason I would share the knowledge with my peers. You are to share nothing! That wisdom is for the Academy and the Academy alone!